Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today is Christ Day. Today is what many Americans will call Easter. Today is my 23rd day of being isolated from what I've known. And today is day 18 in my challenge to 66 books. Today we're going to talk about Job. Now Job, with a new perspective, has become one of my favorite books in the Bible. <clears throat> now, the author is unknown. It is written, we don't know. It says around the time of Abraham, around 19 BC. So between Job, it was covering between <clears throat> uh, 2100 to 1900 BC. And it's weird that the book of Job has an author that we don't know it's almost as if Joan was just thrown in there and somebody was sitting around the campfire and just discuss about their best friend or about someone that they know who went through something um, again there's 39 books in the Bible and there's 27 in the New uh, New Testament the claims to fame is maybe the only Bible written before Genesis meaning the book of Job was written before Genesis, meaning before, uh, if I'm not mistaken, um, oh, how did I forget? Uh, I forgot you guys, I'm sorry. Uh, hold on. Dang, how much did I do? Moses, Moses is the author, Moses. But I like, you guys have no idea how excited I am to talk about Job. Like I feel like I don't even need to look and anything on this on on this form I feel like I know it like the back of my hand but uh, let's do things decent in order and let me just go from the paper before I tell you guys my thoughts um, uh, famous stories includes the book of Job is one of the stories about a man who goes through extreme testing with the loss of his children business and eventually his own health the most famous verse is this my verse that they got to nope it's Job 2 9 and 10 his wife said to him are you still maintaining your integrity curse God and die he replied you are talking like a foolish woman we shall accept good from God and not trouble yo like that right there is wonderful let me finish let me finish cuz I'm off the lie just I'm like you guys have no idea how excited I am um, important parts about the book of Job, which is the 18th book in the Bible. It says, Job's blessings are described in the first chapter, and then his loss and trials from Satan are described, ending in the second chapter. Chapter 3 through 37, Job converts with his three friends who show up. They want to make him feel better, uh, but they are confounded by their own efforts by accusing him of earning by his trials by having sinned. Job has not sinned. He refuses to say bad words about God out loud. Chapter 37 to 40, God confronts them all, especially Job, with a, a strong speech, with a strong speech on why they are not big enough or smart enough to even question his acts. Um, in the closing chapters, in chapter 41, God restores all Job's loss, um, giving him twice as much as before the tenth, before before the 10th before 10 more of his children so um i guess he had 10 children so god gave him more now the book of joe has 41 chapters and the book of joe talks about a man who was honestly minding his business who god found favor on him and then one day god stopped satan and says where thou art coming from satan looks at god and says going to and from and God said hmm another day passed God asked Satan the same thing another day passed God asked same the same thing and then the Bible tells us that God stopped him and says have you not considered Job and right then and there Satan responds back do you not have an edge protection around him right there is where we believe like like, like I'm well in age and no matter how many pastors and bishops I've heard preach about it, my perspective never changed. The stories never changed. The, the outline, the guidance, the God uh, used this man and God uh, 
uh, uh, God allowed this to happen. God uh, allowed Satan to, to do this or, or God uh, wanted him for this to happen. And I happened to listen to um, a, a late Dr. Miles Monroe. And I, I, like I'm telling you, that man was and is to this day still a major blessing in my life when it comes to the Word of God and understanding Scripture by Scripture, even though the few other chapters I didn't really know too much I was talking about because I don't really get into it too much. But now it's like, now I see why it's important to know the Word of God. And uh, late Dr. Miles Monroe said that God didn't ask Satan what about Job. God was questioning Satan, letting Satan know, I know you've been walking back and forth and looking at Job. I know you want to do something with Job. Like you can't fool God. And instead of, see, Satan's not even smart enough to even understand where God was coming from. And he jumped straight to what God already knew. Oh, don't you have a protection around him? Well, how do you know that? Like, how do you know he, I have a protection around him? You've been watching him. And right then and there was like a light bulb went off that it wasn't that God was just doing whatever and said, oh, Satan, go, go mess with Job. It had nothing to do that. Satan has already been looking and watching. And there's a, another couple of verses later on in the Bible to where it says God will work the night shift, meaning God is walking for you night and day, night and day, because the devil is out there. The enemy's out there seeking who he can devour, meaning he is going back and forth. He is checking. Now, Satan is Satan can't go everywhere. Satan can't roam every single place. So he has other enemies and, and other demons just lurking around. You ever just feel like, well, my house is filled with God, but the neighbor three box down is just pure evil. Well, they're working for Satan. I, it sounds crazy, but you know, they're working for the enemy. So they have this domain. That's why the enemy wants so much of the domain. The enemy wants the TV. The enemy wants the airways. The enemy wants the, uh, social media. It's because he wants domain. Anyways, so God was sitting there watching saying like, fool, I already know where you're coming from. And I know you keep asking about Joe. Like, I know you are. So then God says straight up, have you not considered Job? Like when Dr. Miles Monroe said that, I swear to God, it was like I was there. It felt like I witnessed it. And I was like, oh my God, I've never had that perspective to think or to believe. I thought that by me reading and me studying, I thought that God was just saying, well, have you not considered Job? Like I thought God had faith in Job. I thought God was like team Job. But the truth is, Joe only did what the law said. Joe did not have a relationship with God. He, he only did everything by the law of God. Because when you keep reading, you see that everything his children, his wife, or anybody who was under him did, he automatically went and made sacrifices. Oh my God, you must have said, let me make a sacrifice. Let me sacrifice. And he was so, uh, 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 not, not thorough, but he was so driven by the law that there was no relationship so this was God's way of saying I am more than just the law I want the relationship with you so I already know the enemy's watching you and I understand that me and you that you only know me by the law but I want to I want you I want to I want you to know me personally and that's what God is God is a relationship type of person so when all this came about and when you like when you honestly just read it for as is and not as what you've been taught when you read it you realize that joe was just doing what the law said he didn't have a relationship with god he was just as soon as his kids did something sacrifice as soon as his wife did something, sacrifice he just followed the law and then god was able to use that to his glory now the scripture also says that joe never cursed god out loud but that doesn't mean that Job didn't say anything negative in his mind. We have to be realistic right here. God was actually telling us, uh, Job did not curse God verbally, but in his head, he was being tormented because he couldn't understand why God would allow him to do this because I followed your way. I, I did everything that your law told me to do. I've lived a certain life. I've never said this. I never drunk that. I never did that. I never went there. Where I never, like I followed your law and there's going to be a lot of people like Job that's going to follow rules. And it's not going to get you anywhere when it comes to the word of God. God wants a relationship with you. He doesn't want you just to obey him. That's why he gave you free will. 
And Job didn't understand that, but Job continued to carry out his dignity in front of everybody to let everybody know that no matter what happens, I'm still going to trust God. And between all of that that was manifested into Job's life, Job constantly showed us that no matter what formed against us, my favorite verse is from Job 1 and 20. It says, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart. The Lord and I'm sorry, the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. When I tell you this man derobed from himself, because at that particular moment, his life to know that you lost all your kids the same day. You lost your wife. You lost your friends. You lost your, your herd. You lost your, your home. Now you have sores and now you, you're, you're dying internally inside and you can't figure out why has God done this to you because you've done everything right, but you're missing it. It's not that you've done everything right. It's the fact that God is trying to get your attention and tell you I'm personal. I want a relationship with you. I don't want you to go left because I say go left. But understand why I say left. It wasn't that God sat back and said, Joe's a perfect man. And I, I'm honored by him. No, God found favor in David. God found favor in David. Because David was after God's heart. Job only did what he was instructed to do. And God said, I want more. Like when I tell you, I love, I love the book of Job. Because I feel like my life, it feels like no matter what I do right, my God is never enough. Never. And then it gets to a point where I realize it's not about right. It's not about being right. Sometimes I just have to do what I have to do and just call it what it is. It's past saying God knows my heart. No, fool, he doesn't. When you acting like that, you can't continue to use that as an excuse. That's not going to work anymore. God wants you and he wants you all. It's not what you say out loud. I could, I could talk about God right here, but be over here selling and doing anything and, and just mocking him pretty much. He doesn't, it's path, of course, of course God wants you to follow his laws. It's not the laws that are just binding you, it's the laws that's protecting you. When he's telling you, don't do this, because if you do this, you're going to get a disease. You're going to die, you're going to put yourself out there, someone else is going to hurt you. People all have free will. If you put yourself out there, be ready for whatever everybody else is about to throw at you. Meaning I'm not going to go stand on a street corner no more at 2 o'clock in the morning because I know where that got me last time. I remember being so mad and so angry that I went outside at least 700 meters. Like, like it had to be about 700 meters away from safety and almost got my butt kidnapped. Meaning I had a choice. Those kidnappers had a choice. I put myself out there for that choice to happen. Now, I can be in my own house. I can be here. And guess what? I can think me staying here is going to keep me protected. But somebody can bust through my door right now. Somebody can just pick my door. And it wasn't God said, oh, go choose Brittany. She'll be the perfect person for you. That's not God's work. So don't think that being here or being in a church is going to keep you safe. You have to do things to protect yourself and understand he's only given this to you and you have to choose to want to do the word of God. Because as we see in the book of Job, Job did everything right far as the law. But he was missing one thing. He was missing the relationship with God. And if Job can do everything right and lose everything, and still find a way to ask for wisdom. Like, like Job cried out to the Lord. He did a he did a cry. He said pretty much curse the day I was born. Curse my life. He just he he was so hurt and so broken that he was pretty much like, you know, God. Repent that you've ever made me. And in Job on Job 23, 8 and 10 is where you get the night shift. And it is like it is past 
it's God's way of saying that no matter what happens, I cover the night shift. So while you're up trying to figure things out, and when you go to sleep, I am working everything out for your plans. I am, I am working for you. And I've never had so much confidence. And when you learn Joe, when you learn Joe, and you understand the counseling and the relationship that God is asking, and you understand that the the enemy, the enemy can't do nothing without God's permission. So just remember, just because it happened to you, it's not happening because of you. It's God's way of showing that I'm going to use you because you gave me permission. And it may not be the permission that you like or the permission that you want because everybody wants to be used by God on a big platform. But what about the platforms that no one sees? It's just a part of speaking. It's a part of cursing his friends and cursing his wife. Like he told his wife, how dare you depart from me? Like, get, like you have to be, like when they say faith is blind, to believe in something and not have any answers, meaning to, to not understand nothing, you think you understand, but you absolutely have no idea about nothing. Meaning, I know, 150 years, I know, I believe in person. God. And that word belief means something. It means I made a choice to believe in something that I have no knowledge in. And no matter how much I study or what I did, I still don't know because it's belief. I believe. And for Joe to just completely throw himself out. And said, Lord, well, here I am. Here I am. And then God found so much mercy and compassion in this man. Because he finally understood God wanted a relationship with him. God blessed this man so much more than what he's lost. Gave him a new wife, new children, a new business, a new home a new life and this wasn't just in three days he went through this this man suffered i, I apologize i actually i don't know but <laughs> from from chapter one it talks about his blessings and in chapter two it goes into how he loses everything and then it says in chapter 41 then he gets everything back 41 chapters Probably years this man had to endure this so this is at a glance with the 66 challenge I gave myself in the book of Job this is the 18 book uh, the favorites the favor the favor favorites verses or the most famous verses are Job 2 9 and 10 mine is coming from 1 and 20 um, you guys have a wonderful Easter uh, I told you guys yesterday when it comes to the book of Job, I love it. I honestly wish I was just as passionate as the other chapters, but they were low key kind of boring. And I was like, all right, you know, but I do feel like there's a reason why God allowed me to take each book because it seems like everything that I've learned for the last 17 books, it seemed like it happened. The seem like the events are, are happening the moment my life is happening, the, the way, um, the last book was about um, guidance and, and just different things like that. And I really think that if if uh, if Jesus is not coming, time the sixty six is up or day twenty four, or if he's not coming like in our lifetime right now, I do believe he's preparing and he's getting ready to come back on earth. I do believe that the things that are happening, I do believe that it, it is. I believe that it, it is taking a toll to where. I believe that he is coming and it's not in our time. It's not the time that we think it could be much sooner. It could be right now. It could be later. But to when you read the word of God, he says, I'll come when no man thinks of me. That's a lot of people. Just imagine that you could be laughing. You could be in the movie theater. It's not that you're not thinking about God. He says, I will come when everyone knows my name and when no man thinks of me. And... Uh, once a day, I honestly, I sometimes I'll sit there and be like, I'm thinking about you, God. 
just because I'm like, if he comes, I want to say I thought about you that day. But um, God didn't have us live in fear. Stop worrying for tomorrow. Focus on today. Tomorrow has its own troubles. That's also a verse in the Word of God. If you guys want to learn more about any of the books, please start at Genesis and go all the way up to Job. Tomorrow is day 19 and it's Psalms. Yo, Psalms is about to, like, I don't even know how you're going to pick a favorite verse in Psalms because yeah, I got so many, so many in Psalms that it, I don't know. Like these, these, these right here, now these are my books. You know, anything that keeps me, me, I, I love to be me and me is always the best. So, uh, if I learned anything is continue to be content in all your ways. Remember that you are in control of your own actions. And, um, last night I learned one of the biggest lessons, uh, was on Instagram and, um, a competition came up, something that I didn't think I would actually put myself in. But I believe that God was going to help me financially due to the fact that all this was going on. I, I knew he was going to do something. So I told myself, don't worry about that. Just it'll be taken care of. I realized that by me putting myself out there to be in position to receive the blessing, God not only allowed me to be victorious and win, but he also shielded me and made sure that not only my integrity or my character was still glorified in his name. And uh, when I received the money, I paid my tithes with it. I'm saying that publicly because it's like, in all things we have to acknowledge him. And now I actually understood why some people can do things and still be blessed is because I really believe it's where their heart is. I really believe it's, it's, it's uh, I honestly believe it's, it's what you manifest on the inside. You put out something positive, something positive come in. And I am extremely thankful and I am just at all with winning uh, the competition last night. And um, it feels good to know that um, I did something that I was just like, oh God, I don't know if I should do that. And then I did it and I trust God. And it's, it's just the little things that re really works. And um uh, I listened, I uh, went to church this morning. I listened to um, Bishop Lionel Shepherd, and his word came from Luke uh, 23rd verse, if I'm not mistaken. And da, 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 23rd verse, so if you need a word of God, it came from Luke 23. Hold up. I bet y'all didn't think I knew where Luke was, did y'all? I know where my stuff is in my book. It came from Luke and around. Yeah, 20, Luke 23, I think it started at 38, but pretty much uh, what really got me is uh, verse uh, 43. Jesus said to him, Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. God remember me. And if we can learn anything from day from any of your bishop, pastors, ministers that you go to church today, I believe that God is going to remember you on this day. So keep it holy, keep it fun. Um, love all that you do right now it's about restoring you it's about setting the reset it's about getting uh, yourself together there's a song that I used to make fun of because it's older men it was just funny to me uh, it says um, I gotta clean up what I messed up starting my life over again hey I got to clean up right now. I feel like that's where we're all supposed to be right now. I believe that God is, I honestly believe that right now he is trying to hold on to his children. So right now, I really believe that most of y'all really need to get in line with God. Like even if we have to make it to halfway heaven, I'm trying to just get halfway to heaven. I don't care if I can even see hell as long as I don't get there. You know, I don't want to be reborn again as an animal. I don't want to redo this life again. I want my mission to be complete. Um, 65 days to go. No, I'm on day 819. There's only 66 books in the Bible and I'm on day 19. But uh, I love you guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys 
Re reshare this, look at it, uh, jot down your favorite verses, tell me what you learn in the book of Joe, or if you learn something new today by just my perspective of Joe, I told you yesterday, today was going to be fire because Joe was my favorite book. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, and then, look, the closer we get to the New Testament, the fire is going to get, okay? The closer we get, it, it's just, you know, I'm going to come out now. I don't even need a little piece of paper. I'm going to need papers for some of them, but not all of them. Amen. So, um, like I always say, I need to start writing this down so I don't forget. Uh, help others, do good, reach out to someone, call somebody. Um, uh, I forgot what I'll be saying, but I try to say something really, really positive. So, that's something really, really positive. Um, uh, my Sunday Easter dress. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, bye. <laughs>